So this is Calicat the Calicatster, and this is a review of uh, Stranger Old's Children of the Comet, an episode where <laughs> where uh, Kanadu Hura's first uh, mission, um, a comet is going to strike this uh, planet, primitive planet. The Enterprise is sent there to stop the comet from hitting the planet. Um, it's not Star Blazers; it's Silly Track. Of course it is. Um, just, um, it's also a little bit of the Orville. They, they get from that. Um, yeah, so the comet is apparently partly a spaceship, and there's some kind of a device in it that communicates through music, which uh, is a, have an old Transformers episode, and also a Canary Space episode, and also a Space Time Eye episode. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, so that... that that could have been cheesy and dumb, but in this way they, they did it so it wasn't cheesy and dumb. Um, uh, we had the religious zealots called the Shepherds, and we had the Arbiter, the comet is the Arbiter. And as you know from the pilot episode that I reviewed, the Arbiter is literally the Tuvok character in, in my Voyager story that I, that I wrote. Um, yeah, that was not finished. That, that was not um, accepted was rejected like the DS9 one was. However, elements of it appeared all through seasons 2 through 7 of Voyager, and the uh, the other one all through uh, DS9's 5th season all the way to the end. Um, so yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, so we have uh, yeah, references to Chilean space all over the place. We have a uh, goofy thing on humor, and going to the captain's quarters, and hazing, and stuff right out of the track. We have, we have uh, sort of a, a nasally character, right out of Silly Track. A nasally uh, pilot, I guess? A nasally, a nasally sounding pilot. We've got uh, an Ensign Mount worrying about the future that hasn't happened yet and all that. Um, uh, very, very much um, Silly Track, um, which is fine. Uh, I, was not, I was not given any royalties, and, <laughs> and uh, yeah, so, but uh, they probably don't know where those ideas came from. They probably thought they were from. Uh, some other Star Trek person, or person, that didn't know that it was. That was pretty much us. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> but yeah. Uh, but we have not been in this uh, Canadian version of Star Trek at all. It's just odd that they even went so far as to mention the characters from that story, like blatantly, and do a story where Spock helps is the two character who helps the. Uh, Sorry to, to proceed. Um, it's uh, un uncanny. Um, <laughs> if it's a coincidence, it's an incredible coincidence, including like, lines and dialogue from the other story. Uh, maybe they maybe they copied, photocopied the script. And it's been floating around forever. Became children of the comet. Um, it's possible. It's likely, actually. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, the uh, this and the previous episode. So maybe the whole season is going to be silly for. Which would be consistent with Strange Worlds, the Starship locations, and that would be fine. So they go on the planet. The colony, the the comet's gonna hit the planet. And the Zealots show up, and they're called the Shepherds. And uh, the the Zealot commander sounds a bit like Clint Cowpoke, and he's <laughs> and he's like, mm, we're gonna destroy the ship. Oh, actually, he's not less like Cowpoke and more like um. I think it was uh, yeah, it was a uh, road kill, road kill. Born Roadkill was playing the bad guy. That's who that was. It was Born Roadkill. And he was the bad guy. So, hmm. So, that makes sense. He is to destroy the ship. Uh, to crush the Enterprise. But yes, that wasn't me. But uh, <laughs> it was very close. Um, so yeah, there were the commentaries on their, on their web page. Complaining that it's a, a ship of, of, of all women, like a ship of the Valkyries. They didn't say that, but a ship of the Valkyries. Um, um, well, there's some guys there. Samuel Kirk is injured on the planet, in the, the colony. But they beamed out of the comet inside the place with this air. Take off his helmet when he gets injured. Like, what? If they don't even know that the air is getting yeah, breathable, it probably would have killed him. But yeah, they do that in science fiction. That, that was a little weird. They, they shouldn't have done that. Um, 
and then they revive him somehow. There's a heart revival thing on the spacesuit, which doesn't make sense either, but I guess I thought that would be cool. Uh, Samuel Kirk, the, the, the anthropologist, I guess. Well, I don't know. It's not Jim Kirk, it's Samuel Kirk. Um, yeah. It's, it's fine. It's, it's, it's similar to Starship Location Strange Worlds. Uh, because it's the same universe, basically, except uh, this one is um, set in 2259, and Strange Worlds is set in the 2400s, early 2400s. Mm, even though technically, if you did the math with TNG, it would just be approaching 2400, actually, uh, in the next generation. Just be approaching it. Just barely. Um, because it jumped ahead three years. The uh, pandemic made everything jump three years. Which is consistent with the timeline. No, yeah. so the timeline has happened as it was going to happen. And the story, the, uh, the uh, redirecting the comet, was going to happen as it was going to happen. Um, yeah. Um, the chip that came off the comet it, fell into the atmosphere and Helped to generate it. Uh, the the planet bring, the comet brings life. And then the uh, the then they they play dead and long enough for the zealot aliens to, uh, to to for the comet to do what it was going to do and then Spock to help it along. And then at the end they uh, they uh, they sue for peace at the end. So it doesn't end just like the episode the Arbiter from Voyager. And that they and that they talked their way out of it, a bluff. And it was Janeway bluffing in that one, but in this one, it's it's a Pike. Um, it was the same bluff, same ending, almost the same dialogue. Um, yeah, go back and read that old script. Um, yeah, there there was a uh, Star Trek submissions um, thing back in the day. There was a contest. There were two contests. There was a Strange New Worlds contest, which this is likely similar to those stories as well. But there was also a uh, no, right for uh, Deep Space Nine and Voyager contest. And uh, we're allowed to submit to two different shows, or but not the same show. So, Deep Space Nine and Voyager. And uh, yeah, there was a yeah, Fearful Symmetry and The Arbiter. Brown and Yeager um, were written uh, in the original names. Um, yeah, so uh, uh, they were ultimately set back, rejected, but they were used, even though they were set back later after the show was over and rejected. Uh, the uh, Voyager one was stamped twice in the second and fifth seasons. Uh, and I think there was a there was a some some notes in the seventh, but they ended up not using it. Well, they ended up using parts of it, and uh, the the, uh, the the DS9 one was the most interesting to them, and that one became they used elements of that, including a speech from it, in the ship. Not enough of it to say, oh, we need to pay royalties to tell me. There wasn't enough of it to do that. <laughs> but I said, oh, yeah. If I had an agent back then, I called and said, okay, they're going to do a, they're going to put your rep, part of your episode in here. Here's such and such money. Put your episode up there. Give you a byline. Cool. <laughs> Come to the writer's room in L.A. Take a plane. And talk to you. Talk to the, uh, Deep Space Nine people. That didn't happen. Um, the contest did, did not do that for very many fans. There were a few. Uh, some people that won the contest ended up writing episodes. Silicon Avatar was written by a fan. Oh, yeah. and, uh, Yesterday's Enterprise was written by a fan. Classic one. Mm. Sorry. Hello. And Ronald D. Moore rewrote it, but it was written by a fan. Yeah, so. uh, let's see what else? Oh, oh, that Masks episode was also written by a fan. Also... Also, there was nepotism on the set of Voyager, and there was an episode called uh, Death Wish, which was also written, which was written by a fan. Not only that, but the son of one of the producers, Kevin Piller, wrote it. Ken wrote it, and Kevin wrote it, and um, and, and he was my age, and he wrote and he wrote it. I didn't know him, but uh, I seen a convention, and he wrote it because he was feeling angsty, and he thought that Q should just die. That was his reasoning for that one. So they had to say, no, we're not going to kill Q. Let's say some other Q wants to die. Okay, that's fascinating. But it's like, no, no, he just wanted to kill Q. Uh, that was a real reason. I'm from Canada. 
pillar. <laughs> That's killing. <laughs> it was literally that. That, uh. Yeah, that's what he was doing. Anyway, so we have the Enterprise, we have uh, Strange New Worlds, um, and I'm okay with them doing the Arbiter all season, that's fine. Um, okay. But, uh, or at least pieces of it. I'm sure they're gonna have. Well, let's see what they do next. Maybe they'll have a triple one next. But it would be the previous triple one. It would be Lucurno, her the ancestor of Nick Lucarno, meeting, uh, and Tom Paris, meeting, uh, meeting up with, uh, uh, that would be interesting. Meeting up with uh, the crew, yeah. Maybe it'll do that. We'll see. Mm, but yeah, um, maybe not. Well, they're kind of doing the Orville, too. I mean, they, they didn't have... The original Arbiter episode had the two warring factions talking on the bridge and talking on the planet, and it had other stuff going on. That was, that was like... And, and there was no comet in that one. That was... <laughs> but the but yeah the the dialogue view screen dialogue was pretty much the same um, yeah and if it was a Morton Roadkill then of course he, he told them he went there and he, yeah yeah I want to be the bad guy in this one <laughs> just destroy the ship yeah. um but yeah uh so yeah it's weird that it's that let's just say it's a coincidence. Because yeah, just just to say that. And then the next generation road trip from season three of Picard won't be yet another adaptation of something we we did years ago. Yeah, um, hopefully not. They go to find space giants. And yes, they are totally cribbing from our stuff, which is is fine. <laughs> because after all, their stuff is is uh, official. Ours isn't. Does that make our stuff official after they crib from it? <laughs> anyway, so yeah, that's a uh, review of uh, this episode. Yeah, everything works out in the end, yeah. We were, uh, uh, the camaraderie was okay. Uh, it was fine. Uh, it's closer to Star Trek than Picard this, this season. Yeah, so yeah. Oh.